This is the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before we start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look, and we can see a rubber gasket around the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath using either a hairdryer or a heat gun. And I personally prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the parts inside the phone by overheating it. Also, it's not like everyone has a smartphone heat plate or heat pad at home just laying around. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't have to take apart the phone to replace those. Looking at the other side, we see a secondary microphone by the camera bezel. There are 11 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at the motherboard cover, we can see antenna lines drawn on it which are the light gray color lines, the NFC antenna, graphite film top transfer heat, as well as the wireless charging coil. On the other side, we can see additional graphite film. At this point, the battery cable needs to be disconnected from the main board. Before the speaker assembly can be removed, these two flex cables as well as the coaxial cable underneath the speaker assembly need to be disconnected from the subboard. It's somewhat of a weird and annoying design. There are additional antenna lines drawn on the bottom speaker assembly, and there's some more graphite film. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening. These two flex cables connect the main board to the subboard. Once the speaker assembly has been removed, we have access to the screen cable, which is connected to an extension cable that connects to the main board. 
In order to replace the screen, at this point, you disconnect the flex cable for the screen from the extension cable, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid-frame, and reassemble the phone. We can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. This flex cable is for the volume keys, the power button and fingerprint scanner, as well as this button on the bottom corner. Here's a look at the headphone jack. And here's the 12 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. The main board is a dual layer board design. We can see a secondary microphone on the top. And here's a look with the shield cover removed. On the other side, we can see the proximity sensor on top, as well as the thermal pad on the back shield. Once the shield cover has been removed, we can see additional thermal pads on top of the RAM and processor, as well as the ROM or storage. This is the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, and below that is the 48 megapixel primary camera. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. On the back of the camera assembly, there is graphite film to help transfer heat. To pry off and remove the battery, there are two adhesive pull tabs provided to help you pry the battery off. However, I usually don't have much luck with these pull tabs since these type of pull tabs almost always tend to rip or tear. So I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. This is the 5000 mAh battery. A single Phillips screw is holding down the subboard. This is the first time I've seen this for an adhesive strip underneath the subboard. I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol and pry that off. The primary microphone is located over here, and the SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side. And here's a look at the charger port flex cable. There's a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself.
Now for anyone who's worried about accidentally puncturing the microphone or the filter for the microphone, both on the bottom and top of the frame, by accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes and they won't get damaged. Now looking at the mid frame, we can see a cutout over here with a layer of 3D graphite top transfer heat. From the looks of this cutout in the frame, it looks like they possibly considered using a copper vapor chamber on this phone, however ended up going with a 3D layer of graphite instead. There are three additional Phillips screws to remove. Here's a look at the flex cable for the volume keys, fingerprint sensor, and the button on the bottom. At this point, the buttons on the frame can be removed by pushing them in. As for the vibrator motor and the top earpiece speaker, those can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. There's also a plastic placeholder for possibly a 5G millimeter wave antenna. Now for the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.